Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Chris Jones, uh, at the other end of the country from um, Andrew, um, down in Cornwall. Um, this is going to be a really, really quick canter through what we've been doing uh, up to now. It's all very, very new, so we haven't got lovely pictures of very many trees uh, yet, but um, I hope you've got a flavour for what's uh, going through our head uh, as we've been doing it. Um, much more interested to talk about me, really, first. Uh, I'm uh, an organic livestock farmer currently uh, with, with a new um, uh, grass-fed uh, dairy uh, set up. We're uh, founder members of the PFLA, as it happens. Uh, grade 3 land, very typical farm, silty clay loam soil, uh, half and half facing north and, and south. Uh, we're also, as it happens, um, hosting the Cornwall Beaver Project. Uh, I've got a really keen interest in uh, uh, where we go from here um, and something I've been uh, very interested in is, I'm glad that Andrew brought it up, was the carbon audit thing and we, we've been looking at that for 10 years or so now and it, it fundamentally changed the way we farmed. Um, we think we've gone nearly as far as we can uh, with actual managing our soil and, uh, and pasture and now we want to try and up the ante by getting more trees planted. I've said that already. Um, okay, that's all. Okay, so this, this is a, a kind of a, a where we're at now with our pastures. Uh, uh, mostly really uh, um, a diverse mixture of, of, of lots of herbs and legumes and grass, and it's all working uh, pretty well. So why the hell we're in a field? Um, okay, lots of different benefits. Some of them have been talked about. Shade and shelter. This year, we, uh, in the, the height of the drought and the hot weather, uh, we took about a 20% hit on um, milk yield. Funnily enough, we actually started uh, uh, planting trees a, a, a little before that, but um, nowhere near quick enough. So, uh, browse, um, really important. Uh, we are trying to have absolutely no external inputs at all with the. Uh, with the cattle. We do buy them rock salt, but um, that, that, that's, that's all. Um, trees, much more interesting a, a, a mineral um, analysis on the browse. Carbon sequestration. <coughs> um, better infiltration of the soil, we think, uh, for water. Uh, more improvements in soil structure. Also, leaf fall and so on will help to, to uh, feed the soil as well. Drainage, uh, our uh, soil by and large uh, with the, these long-term herb rich lays, they uh, suck up water like crazy. I think when we had an infiltration test done this year in one field, it was, it was just seconds, not minutes, but seconds to get the, the soil away. So, uh, but the trees will help that. Bedding, um, one of the things that we do have to buy any straw, it is a hell of a price if anyone uh, has been doing any of that. Um, uh, and if we can get these trees away, uh, from time to time we will be able to cut them um, for chipping uh, to make uh, bedding. Um, potential for fuel wood, and so on and so on. I mean, there's uh, a whole host of, of things that we can, uh, we can do with the wood once we've got that resource. Okay, so what we actually did, um, we thought about it for bloody years. I'm afraid I'm one of those people who, who does very often take a long time to actually cut, cut, uh, uh, to turn a thought into action, um, but uh, uh, you know my background is actually in forestry, um, and uh, it, it, so I had lots and lots to think about, um, and, and um, you know it, it's it's uh, it's not really my farm, you know it's 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 me and Lloyd's bank, so I, I bugger it up at, uh, at some some personal risk, I guess. Uh, so so it did take some thinking about. Anyway. Uh, in 2017, we finally bit the bullet and decided this particular field, uh, north-facing, um, uh, and with a well-established herbal mix, we would try and plant some trees. So, about 15 acres. Uh, very, very heavy sort of ball clay at the bottom of the field. The rest of it silty clay loam. Um, and we uh, uh, decided that we'd plant rows of uh, mostly willow, 
Um, about 30 metres apart, so we can still use tractors and so on, uh, going uh, rather than with contours, across contour, because it's steep enough to turn over tractors, I know. Um, <laughs> and um, we, we, we uh, uh, still want to be able to operate tractors, so we, we didn't go with a contour, which might have been uh, a more elegant uh, solution. C can anyone hear me at the back? Good. So you can't hear me at the back. How's that? Is that better? Okay. Um, uh, okay, and then initially we planted those trees at, at six meter spacings. And uh, two kinds of willow and then some uh, rubinia, which is black locust, uh, an American imported tree. It's quite nice, uh, we think, for farming because the, uh, the foliage has got a very high uh, uh, crude protein content. Um, uh, the wood is very dense and naturally durable, so we can use it for uh, uh, fencing and so on in due course, and also makes tremendous firewood. Uh, and the other two, the, the willows, uh, they're cheap. Uh, we can just cut them and, and, and throw the sticks in the ground. And that was quite important. So what happened? Um, uh, it wasn't all that great because we were only protecting at that stage with uh, uh, rabbit guards and then um, a temporary electric fencing. What did we learn from it? We need better fencing and zero tolerance on geese. <laughs> Which is already in effect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and then um, in December, uh, we did uh, a replacement of dead trees uh, and, and um, beating up the rows as well, uh, increasing the density. And um, on top of that, uh, we put uh, a, sort of a, a semi-permanent high tensile electric fence. Now that is a relatively high cost solution, but actually it gives us a really good infrastructure in that field for, for uh, our mob grazing to work off. Um, so we don't see that as, a, 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 as a, an excessive amount of cost just for the trees. What we've got now as well is, is um, uh, uh, narrow little corridors, about two metres wide, uh, with the trees in, so the cattle can reach into graze around just about up to the trees, but, no, but not actually the trees themselves. Because it's like that, if we think, mm hmm, now this is working, let's try and do something a bit sexier, maybe put some fruit trees in or some nut trees or whatever, we can make that investment reasonably confident that we can get away with, uh, with what happens um, uh, when we get the cattle in the field. Okay, that's a really shit picture, uh, but um, <laughs> if you, uh, it was a very dull early morning before I came up here, and uh, I, uh, <laughs> the, the great thing was I went and saw the beavers just after that, and they were up and about, so that was great. But you can just see it, it's just a row of trees in a field, boom. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing, it, it is not difficult. It's all really, really simple stuff. If I, if I can do it, anybody can. Um, okay, just some uh, uh, people that I mentioned. Um, Eric Tonsmeyer's written some super books on, on this uh, subject. Um, they've probably got some in the, uh, in the um, Chelsea Green stand. Bristol Green Massive, uh, uh, a gang of random uh, environmentalists from Bristol came down and helped us to plant the trees, so that was great and then just heaps and heaps of others, which we can talk about later. I think we're out of time, just about. So, is it time for a question or two? Yes. Okay, thank you very much.